Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to um, finish uh, this story with space coordinates, um, explaining what is spherical coordinates. Um, now, this lecture is part of the advanced mathematics course for um, teenagers. It's presented on unizor.com. Um, the site has lots of notes and for registered students, uh, even the whole process of education, including enrolling and exams. So I suggest you actually to watch this lecture from the site and basically utilize it as the whole educational process. Okay, back to spherical coordinates. Now, we have already covered in two previous lectures Cartesian coordinates and uh, cylindrical coordinates in three-dimensional space. So, this is the third system which can be used uh, to identify the points in three-dimensional space. So, here is what it is. As always, we have to have some kind of an origin. This is the fixed point um, relative to which we will try to um, describe our position of our point using some numerical characteristics. Now, the next thing is um, the distance from uh, the point in question. So, OA is equal to R. It's a radial distance, because this is basically like a radius from, uh, from a center um, of uh, uh, origin of coordinates to, to the point. Okay. Now, obviously this alone does not identify the point, because anything on a sphere around um, the origin would have the same characteristic, right? Now, next what we need is, we have to have um, an axis um, relative to which we will um, measure the angle of deviation. So, usually it's displayed vertically, and uh, you can use the letter Z actually, again as in Cartesian and uh, cylindrical coordinates to specify this axis as a z-axis. Um, what is important actually from the language perspective, the direction, the vertical direction towards the positive um, uh, side of this, uh, of this axis is called zenith. So now you can actually measure the angle of deviation from zenith, it's called polar angle. In some way, it's similar to polar angles on the on the plane. So it's deviation from certain uh, directions. So this direction is called zenith, and this one is a deviation from uh, angular deviation from the z fr from the zenith. Now, does this define our point? Well, obviously, again, not exactly because any point which has the same angle with my axis, with my z-axis, would qualify. So it's like a cone, basically, right? So this point A, if R is fixed, then um, you have a sphere, right? And uh, is, if phi uh, angle, polar angle is fixed, then you have a cone. And uh, intersection between a cone and a sphere would be a circle. So it's still not exactly the um, determination of the, uh, uh, of the position of the point. But, well, we need three coordinates, you remember, right? In three-dimensional space, we have defined only two of them. So, this is angle Z, O, A. This is phi. Now, so, how can we calculate the third coordinate in spherical um, uh, system of coordinates? So, we need a reference plane, which is somehow uh, equivalent to xy plane in the Cartesian coordinates because it's perpendicular to a z axis and it goes obviously through origin. So the same plane we had in um, the cylindrical coordinates, Cartesian coordinates, and, and here we have it in um, spherical coordinates. Now, 
Now, what do we do with this plane? Well, obviously, we will project our point and we will have this uh, direction from um, our origin to a projection and measure the angle of deviation again angle an angle of deviation from some axis which we again fixed on this plane so the angle in this case for instance in this case it would be this one now here is um, a, a slight difference i would say angle phi is an angle of deviation from vertical from positive direction of the z-axis towards our point and it can be obviously from 0 to no long, n n not greater than 180 degree not, no, not greater than pi right and it's always positive now this is also positive but the, uh, the angle can be from 0 to 360 degrees right because we are always measuring counterclockwise if you look from the positive uh, direction of the z and it will be always from 0 to 360 so now we have and we can actually put letter x because in some way it's equivalent to the x-axis in the Cartesian coordinates in many cases picture even contain the, thir uh, the third axis, the y-axis which is not really used in uh, spherical coordinates because we are using only the x-axis to measure the deviation from the positive direction of x and by the way it's called uh, azimuth so now we are talking about angle x o a projection and that's usually the letter theta greek letter now as far as letters are concerned um, i think this is more um, traditional in mathematics in physics they prefer actually to use the theta for um, a polar angle and, and phi for azimuth on a reference plane well I mean letter is letter whatever you want to use you, you, you're obviously free to do whatever you want alright so this is an explanation of what is spherical system of coordinates so it's three characteristics distance from the origin OA angle which ray OA is deviated from positive direction uh, of the z-axis from the zenith so that's phi and then if you drop the projection from A onto the plane um, of reference which is perpendicular to z-axis and goes through origin obviously on which there is a chosen direction a positive direction um, so the deviation from this chosen fixed direction is an azimuth that's the third characteristic so again what do we need we need origin we need z-axis we need reference plane and we need uh, an x-axis from which we count the azimuth right so these are three characteristics well three construction elements which we need to be able to determine um, spherical coordinates now let's spend some time and talk about how the point defines uh, spherical characteristics and how spherical characteristics define the point again it's supposed to be one-to-one -one correspondence right and by the way what I also mentioned is that phi is from zero when we are actually at zenith no uh, and to pi pi would be when it's vertically down so the a can be here or a can be here so this is zero uh, phi and this is uh, um, pi 180 degrees pi now as far as uh, theta is concerned that would be obviously from zero uh, to no to less than two pi now this is a less 
because I don't want to specify 2 pi because it will correspond to the same as 0, so we don't really need it. Well, obviously r is supposed to be from 0 less than infinity, only positive. So, these three determine the point, and the point determines these three. So, let's just follow this logic. If I have a point, and I have these axis and reference plane and the x-axis, etc., how can I uh, calculate uh, the three spherical coordinates? Well, obviously, well, I forgot to mention, unit of measurement you need for the lengths, right? So, you measure OA, that's your R. Then, since you have OA and you have this axis, z-axis, using these two lines we draw a plane and within that plane our phi angle is just a flat angle which we can measure at angular units, radians or uh, degrees, right? So that's how we measure phi. Just have a plane through OA and z-axis, they are intersecting so there is one and only one plane, so no problems there. Now, and the third characteristic, you have to project A to the reference uh, plane and take the OAP um, ray and uh, compare direction with the positive direction of the um, x-axis and that would give you the azimuth. Measure the angle counterclockwise from 0 to no more than 2p. Okay, that's how we go from a point to, to, to three coordinates. Let's go back. So let's say we have these three coordinates. What do we do with them to construct a point? Well, using R, you can construct a sphere. That would be a locus of all points which are on the same distance R from the O. Among these points, there is our point A. So it defines a surface on which our uh, point is located. Now, since I have angle phi, um, I can create a conical surface with the um, generatrix being on an angle phi from the axis of symmetry of this cone, right? So that would be like a cone like this. This is a cone on one hand. On another hand, we have a sphere, right? A sphere would be something like this. So a sphere will give me, um, the R will give me the sphere, the phi will, will give me a cone, and that's the curve where the cone intersects the sphere. So we have a two-dimensional sphere after we use one coordinate. Then we have line, curve, whatever, which is kind of one-dimensional, um, which specify even further. So our point A is not just on a sphere, but on this particular circle on the surface of a sphere. And the third coordinate, since we have uh, the, the azimuth, the way how we do it, let's project this circle onto our reference plane. I will get a circle here on the plane itself, right? And since I have it on the plane, I can basically have this angle and construct a ray. And wherever this ray intersects, that would be my projection. Now we go all the way up back to the sphere. Or a, or, a, or a circle, and we will get the uh, point A. Just draw it perpendicular to the reference plane from this point where my ray intersects this circle. Okay, so this is how we go from numbers to points. And th the last thing is I would like to present a couple of examples. Um, spherical coordinates seem a little bit more complicated than s uh, cylindrical. Cylindrical may be a little more complicated than Cartesian, but there is a purpose in everything. Now, what's the purpose of spherical coordinates? Well, um, actually, my third example would probably explain it a little better, but let me start from two trivial examples. 
Now, the first example is a sphere. I would like to present an equation which represents a set of points which lie on the same sphere of a radius r. Right? So, what would be that equation? That's the equation. If r is given, and this is the variable coordinate, one of these coordinates, then this is s, I mean, it cannot be simpler than that, right? So, sphere, however complex that thing actually is, this geometrical object is, its description using algebraic um, equation in spherical coordinate is simple, right? Now, how would it look in uh, Cartesian coordinates? Well, that's this way. I think we did a couple of times examine this, but this is a distance. If x, y, and z are coordinates, then using twice the Pythagorean theorem, you will get this as a distance from uh, the origin of coordinates. So, using this Pythagorean theorem twice, that's the equation you will get. This is simpler than this, obviously, right? Now, another example is Let's say you have a cone, but not just cone, uh, I would rather say conical surface, okay? Conical surface with apex being at the center, at the origin of coordinates. So this is my conical surface, okay? Infinite in both, in both uh, uh, directions. So there is somewhere a directress, right? There is um, apex coincides with um, with origin of coordinates. Now the plane where my directress is is supposed to be perpendicular to the z-axis, right? And the center is supposed to be on the z-axis, right? Center of this directress. So directress is given, apex is given, Right, so all the lines which go through apex and one of the points here, they are form the cylindrical surface. Now, what's the equation of all these lines in the cylindrical surface? Well, if this is angle phi between the axis of this conical surface and the generatrix, then that would be a direction. I mean. Sorry, if this is alpha. So, if I would like to express a conical surface with uh, around the z-axis, with the center of the origin, with an angle alpha between the um, uh, ax uh, axis of rotation and the uh, generatrix, then this is the equation. So, phi is a coordinate. We don't fix r, we don't fix theta, so everything is just defined exactly one by one simple equation. Now, the third example is a little bit more complicated and a little bit not mathematical. Um, it's related to position of a star. So, um, you know that uh, astronomers are usually telling you, if you want to see uh, uh, some specific star um, at this particular location on the surface of the Earth, at this particular time, you have to um, uh, direct your telescope at this particular an angle to the horizon, something like this, right? Now, what does it actually mean? Well, it actually means uh, a convoluted way of presenting spherical coordinates. Because here is what I, I, I can suggest. So let's say this is a star. Now this is the Earth. Now the Earth actually has an axis of rotation, right? And you can always display it as vertical axis, right? Doesn't really matter. So um, you are somewhere on the surface of the Earth. Now, obviously, it doesn't really matter where exactly you are, when, whenever the, the surface is rotating, you will be basically on a parallel, right? Which is 
perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Now, from the position of a star, actually, this is still a very small object, and the angle between axis uh, of rotation of the Earth and direction on the star, this angle is actually the same. However, whenever you are rotating, you see the star actually as it rotates on the sky, right? So, how to measure where exactly this... So, if you consider that the Earth is standing still, right? And relatively to Earth, your star is rotating, right? On, on the sky. So, you see it at different uh, places in the sky. Well, what you can do is you can project um, the position of the of the star onto the uh, reference plane where you are. So it goes through the parallel where you are, perpendicularly to the axis of rotation. Then you can obviously uh, project this and rotation of the star relative to, to some direction. Let's say you, you have direction to the north within this plane. You have rotation, uh, you have direction to the north. So you can always measure this angle. So whenever astronomers are saying that you can observe uh, your star at certain angle from the horizon, it's this angle, right? which is 90 degree minus this angle. So it's exactly the same thing, just a different angle. So instead of, uh, instead of angle phi, you're using angle 90 minus phi, right? 90 degree minus phi. All right, so that's the same. Now, so, uh, now the second thing is they're talking about specific time. Now, what time means? Well, time means a rotation of the Earth, actually. So, the time is the number of hours from certain um, uh, moment in time uh, when the Earth actually, when zero actually is, when, when the Earth uh, goes through the Greenwich Meridian, right? So, whatever the time specified is, is actually a measure of the azimuth. Um, which you, you should observe your star. So it's just a little bit more complicated to talk about azimuth and, and uh, uh, polar angle. It's simpler for, for the consumers to talk about the time in a specific uh, look at, at a specific location on Earth and, uh, and the angle from the horizon. But in theory it's exactly the same type of things. Now we don't actually talk about um, uh, radial distance because that's not really what's important. I mean, yes, obviously this is the third coordinate, but our uh, purpose, uh, our astronomical purpose is just to have a direction. So the, the phi and theta are basically defining this direction and uh, instead of phi they're using um, instead of uh, phi they're using 90 degree minus phi and instead of theta they're using time which is actually a measurement of the azimuth considering the speed of rotation of the Earth. Okay, so that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about spherical coordinates. Um, I, I doubt you will be uh, using this um, in your practical life unless, unless you might be an astronomer or something like that. But still it's interesting um, and what, what also is interesting is that no matter which coordinate system you're using, and we have described three of them, Cartesian, cylindrical, and, and spherical, and I'm sure anybody can think about some other system of coordinates, but what's interesting is that in the three-dimensional uh, space where we live, it's exactly three um, numerical characteristics are needed. No matter how you... Um, no matter how you define your system of coordinates. In the Cartesian system, you need three linear dimensions along the three axes, x, y, and z. In a cylindrical uh, uh, system, you need uh, two linear and uh, one uh, angular dimensions, right? 
So you, you need a linear distance to a projection, you need an angle, and then you need vertical also linear. And in spherical system you have one linear and two angular. So no matter how uh, you, you design your system, you still need three numerical characteristics. And that's what actually making our space three-dimensional. This is a property of the space and uh, no matter how you uh, try to position your point, to define the position of your point in the three-dimensional space, you need three coordinates, three numerical characteristics. Um, so, be, being of a certain dimension or dimensionality of the space is really much deeper property of the space than anything we just uh, associate with, with any coordinate system. All right, that's it. I would um, recommend you to go through the notes for this lecture. Maybe I mix, missed something, I'm not sure. And, um, and I do recommend you to actually go to this website and engage more um, actively in the whole process, in the whole educational process, from the beginning, from the first lectures about numerical systems, etc., down all the way. That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>